girl up for me too much, too much, too much, excess love, too much, Jesus, you love me, oh, that you gave your life.
just a sweet, sweet thing about my Jesus Christ. He's a loving and forgiving and so merciful. Oh, my Bridget, he will never, never let you down.
and there are some new faces. If you've been here for the first time this morning since we've had lockdown, just raise your hand so I can see how many people have just come in. Oh, I see a face there. I see a hand there. And I'm sure there was a few more. <laughs> yeah, there was. Good morning. Well, we're going to start off today's service. We've got an exciting service for you today. So before we go any further, let's pray. So let's stand. And then we'll go into a time of worship uh, with our brother, Craig. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this new day, a day that has never been seen before. We thank you, Lord, because you are God and you are God alone. We thank you, oh God, because you are, Father God, wonderful. Father God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you are the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you that we could be in your house today to worship and to glorify your wonderful name. And Father, I pray that whatever is said and whatever is done will be done to the honor and to the glory of your name. And Father, remember all those who are unable to be here this morning. Father, I pray you will be with them wherever they are. And Father, whatever I fail to ask of you, I pray that you will grant it in your precious name. Amen. Oh, by the way, please sit down. There are some house rules. Can I ask that you um, keep your masks on and they cover your nose? If you sneeze or cough, please use a tissue, put it in your bag or pocket and take it home or find a bin. And if you want to um, use the toilet, you know, just, just let the ushers know so that they know uh, and they'll, they'll be able to help you if there's anything that you need. And if you need to use the toilet, please just go straight there and come straight back. And can I ask that when you come into the service in the mornings, on a Sunday morning, please, can I ask that you take your seats? I noticed this morning some of you were talking to your friends, and I understand you want to do that, but we are in a different time. So can I ask that you please come in and take your seats? Now, without further ado, let me hand you over to our brother, Craig. Amen. Amen. Can everyone stand as we just really give God thanks for allowing us in his house again? We just give him the glory and the praise and the honor for he is truly, truly awesome. He is amazing. He is worthy of our praise and adoration. It all belongs to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
believe that's in the house. Your grace, your grace and mercy. Your grace, your grace and mercy. Brought me through. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your grace and mercy, it brought me through because I'm living in this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you to because your grace and mercy it brought. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. For you alone on my strength, my shield. To you alone, make my spirit. And I long to worship you Cause you alone, you alone Oh my strength, my shield To you alone Make my spirit
that song only means something to you if you really know the Lord that song only means something to you if you really know the Lord if you know the Lord shout with a voice of triumph hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus yes Lord yes Lord you are awesome you are awesome you are awesome Jesus you are great you are great you are great and how great you are Jesus we can only sing and show our reverence to you by obedience that's what we shall do Lord hallelujah Jesus Oh, you're 
each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today and I know that there are some new faces that I've not seen for a while so welcome I would also like to welcome all those who are watching from around the world who are tuning in and can I ask that you please subscribe and click the uh, like button okay can I ask that we all stand and greet our bishop and his dear wife and Pastor Andrew and Reverend Alicia, all the ministers of the house. And can I ask that everybody look to this side of the church and clap and say hello to everybody. And then I want you to turn around and face the back end of the church. I don't know if that works, but anyway, wave everyone. Wave to everyone at the top and everyone to the left, okay? Because I know we haven't seen each other for a long time and I know we don't get a chance to greet each other after service. Okay, it's time that we dig into the Word. Can I ask you that you get your Bible out, please, and your um, phones or whatever it is you, you use? And turn your Bibles uh, to the scripture for today, Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 21. And when you have it, can you please stand? And we're going to read it together. When you have it, can you please stand? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to the end of 21. Okay, we'll read together. For this reason, together, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations 
forever and ever. Amen and amen. Please take your seats. Okay, who knows what today is? Vision Day. Yes, it's Vision Day. So, Vision Day, it's an annual event at the start of our new ministry year. And it's where we set, we reset our mission, restate our vision, clarify our goals and directions of travel for the coming year. Our mission has not been aborted. It has not been cancelled. Strategies and methods will change, but the church mission remains until it's accomplished. No matter what COVID is doing, no matter what is going on, we still have a job to do. It is not cancelled. So before we go, we are going to take a, a look at the past year. So I believe that there is a presentation. So we're going to be looking at the past year. Okay, I think we'll look at that in a few moments. Um, so can we all stand, and we'll come back to that in a moment. So can we all stand, and we'll look at our mission statement. together. Our mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to all humanity and to impact the kingdom of God at all levels of community and social life. The church we see is a house of prayer for nations. The church we see has dynamic worship, passionate praying and empowering teaching, where the kingdom of God comes in power, accompanied by supernatural signs and wonders. The church we see is a healthily growing church, maturing spiritually and multiplying through small groups. The church we see provides a safe place where hurting, vulnerable, and disaffected individuals and families come and experience healing and genuine community. The church we see is one where every single member is valued, equipped, and operating according to their gifts. The church we see is economically strong and more than able to meet the financial demands arising through its mission and ministry. The church we see sets a standard of ministry excellence that serves as an example and a resource to the wider NTA family and the body of Christ. Amen. Please take your seats. I think we'll just go back to the clips if they're ready.
morning church at the crossroads of history. Power here just uh, want to uh, share this short video message with you and I want to say to you that as a church that we are concerned about the spread of the coronavirus and that we are doing everything that we can to ensure that our building is safe it is indeed a privilege um, to be worshiping with you today we are living in unprecedented times but we thank God that we still have the opportunity to worship God, to give him the glory and to give him the praise. The Lord should be your shepherd. The Bible says that he is sufficient. He's enough. Come on, say, the, Jesus is enough for me. He's all that I need. Encourage fluids such as water, soup, and nutritious drink. Come on, let's join with the angels and cry. We cry holy, Lord God Almighty. Say, I want to yeah. Get your emblems ready, that's your juice and your bread, as we get ready to break bread. The first prayer point is about salvation. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you for this day. We pray for those who are seeking the Lord at this time. going on over these past few months we have been busy haven't we we've been busy doing things that we hadn't thought of doing doing things in a different way in a new way things that we had planned to do in the future one day whenever we get round to it sort of thing we got into it very quickly we have been busy so for the next coming year our main objective is to engage the lost conduct autumn and spring 13 um, week um, alpha course and that's going to be virtual digital equip the saints double online our small groups bible studies and we have actually you know i'd like to thank all those who have been leading that all those who have been working so hard towards that can i ask you the leaders for the small line uh, bible studies to please stand please stand this is a very fraction of those who've been leading these small line bible studies and do you know what it is really good there are about over 80 people that are on this so if you haven't signed up for that, now's the opportunity. And if you want to know more, actually, I think it'll be on the screen later so you can find out how you can sign up for that. We're going to be empowering for service, unify and pivot all pastoral care and support efforts to work collaboratively and effectively in meeting the needs of our members and the wider community. We will no longer be working in silos. We will be working together as one. So as a body, we can meet the needs of the community. We can meet the needs of all those that need our help.
So those are our objectives for this next coming year. Now I'd like to introduce uh, Brother Joshua who's going to do a, a, a presentation for you. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. It's so amazing to be in the house of the Lord. And so today I'm just going to present very briefly the vision uh, that I feel the Lord has shared with me uh, for the youth ministry going forward. Um, the youth ministry, um, we take care of one of the most vital parts of the church. And so what we really want, what I really feel like in my time of prayer and fasting with God, I'm really seeing the fact that we need to create and develop radical disciples, okay, and in res radical disciples. And what I mean by that is that we have young people that are empowered, they are equipped, and they are ready to fight, okay, the evils that are prevailing through our world today. So, for example, the main thing, and as, as a maths teacher in a secondary school, this is something that I deal with on a regular basis as a form tutor as well. And that mental health is the biggest challenge that our young people are facing. It is by far the biggest challenge. It used to be about 10 years ago that one in 10 children would suffer from mental health issues. It has now gone up to one in eight. Anxiety has tripled in the last 10 years. Anxiety has tripled in rates, okay? The amount of young children that are referred to CAMS, which are a group that deal with um, some severe issues at homes um, and with children's with children, working with children who are struggling mentally, okay? It is getting to a point where in, we are in a dire situation. As you can see, that 75% of mental health problems, okay, are begin start before the age of 14. Before the age of 14. And so we can see what the problem is. We, we can see what the problem is. We can see that our young people are struggling. They're struggling with social media, with images of themselves, with uh, so many things that are challenging their minds and confusing them and making them believe that they are something that they are not. But there is a solution. And the solution is that we need our young people to have depth. And when I talk about depth, I'm talking about being deep in God's word, being anchored in God's word, understanding who they are, understanding where their place is in the body of Christ. And in order to do that, we need, number one, we need them to be diligent. We need diligence. So we need to be able to study the word diligently. Okay, that's something that we're going to impress on them. Studying the word diligently, not just reading your Bible, the verse of the day every day, but diligently seeking God. That's how we strengthen our relationship with him. The other thing is discipleship. That means myself and others that are around the church, we all have a responsibility to walk with these young people, to share with them the, our testimony, to be transparent with them, to be open with them, to show them that there is a way to live life free from sin, free from the bondage of sin, free from the bondage of other people's opinions and ideas of how they should live. Devotion. We need to cultivate an idea of being devoted to God. Being devoted to God. Devotion isn't about how you feel necessarily. It's about understanding a commitment towards something regardless of how you feel. Understanding this is the source of your strength. This is the thing that is going to keep you from death and bring you into life. And so we need them to become devoted followers of Christ. And all those things would see us begin to develop radical disciples. Radical disciples. The young people today are the only ones that can reach their generation. And their generation are really suffering. They're really crying out. And so we need, we need, or oh, it's going to take all of us church, the youth ministry, we can only do so much. And myself and my team, we will work tirelessly 
to provide this service for the young people by the grace of God. But it takes all of us as a community, as a body of Christ, to encourage the young people, to support them spiritually, pray for them, even financially. Some of our young people are going off to uni, blessed with them with something financially. Let us support and show these, the young people how much we love and care for them. And I believe that we can really really produce some radical disciples that will take territory for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus, that he is our anchor and he keeps us no matter what wind or billow may roll. And that's the same thing for the young people, for the old people, for the everyone in between. Amen. So if you just stand and sing this song, amen. We're going to sing one verse and a couple choruses. One of my favorite, favorite songs. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we have an anchor that keeps the soul. Stand fast and sure while the billows roll Fastened to the rock which cannot move Ground and firm in the Savior's love We have an anchor that keeps us soul Stand fast and sure while the billows roll Grounded to the rock which cannot move Found and firm in the Savior's love For your anchor hold in the storms of life When the clouds unfold in their wings of strife When the strong ties lift the cable strain For your anchor hold more firm remain Oh, we have an anchor that keeps us soul while the pillows roll Fastened to the rock Which cannot move Ground and firm in the sea We have an anchor That keeps the soul Stead fast and sure While the pillows roll Fastened to the rock Which cannot move Ground and firm Savior's love. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. Stand fast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Down the firm in the Savior. We have an anchor. If you really believe it, speak it over yourself, over your household, over your children. Over your cousin, over your family, over your road. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ground and firm and deep in the Savior's love. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. Stand fast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Fasten to the rock. Fasten to the rock, fasten to the rock, oh, fasten to the rock, we are fasten to the rock, yes, we are fasten to the rock, oh, fasten to the rock, fasten to the rock, yes, you are fasten to the rock, yes, you are fasten to the rock, oh, fasten to the rock, fasten to the rock, fasten to the rock. Fasten to the rock which cannot move, ground and firm in the Savior's love. We have an anchor that keeps the soul. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have an anchor that keeps the soul, which means that we have an assurance that no matter what comes our way, we are anchored in Christ. The billows may roll, the winds may blow, disappointments may come, but we are anchored in the love of Jesus, which means that we are safe, we are secure. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Before you take your seat, church, we've got we to understand that when we sing these songs, we're making a declaration. Many times the declaration is prophetic because sometimes the situation doesn't look like what it should be. But you're reminding the enemy, I have an anchor. And I will remain steadfast and sure. Nothing's going to shift me. Nothing's going to move me. I have a resolve. I have a determination. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined. I said I am determined. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let the people of God worship Him. Let the people of God praise Him. Let the people of God lift up His name. Let the people of God magnify Him. Let the people of God praise Him. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The presence of God is in this house. And if there's nothing else that you hear today, remember, and it's a someone's spirit, you have an anchor. I said you have an anchor in the midst of sickness, in the midst of strife, in the midst of lack, in the midst of plenty, in the good times and in the bad times, you have an anchor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. It's wonderful to see you in the house today. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is worthy of all the praise and he's worthy of all the honor. And we praise him today. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Is anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. I know time is far spent, but today is vision day. And how many of you know that without vision, the people will perish? And I give God thanks that the Lord has given a vision to this house as we go forward into the, this new ministry year, knowing that God that has led us thus far is the same God that will bring us forward. I just want to greet Bishop, Lady Marcel, my dear wife, Reverend Alicia, and all the ministers and all the saints, worship team musicians. I want to greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And I say, every time I say that, we need to understand that there is power in the name of Jesus. It's the name that's been keeping us even through this season. It's the name that's kept us alive in the midst of COVID-19. It's the name that is above every name. And I declare that name in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Greetings to all those that worship with us online. We love you and thank you for joining us. Amen. I give God thanks for he's led us thus far in our service. And so many of you were in our members meeting yesterday. And if you were not there and you are here today as our members and friends, we understand that this year the Lord has given us a theme as we realign ourselves going forward. And the theme that the Lord has given us is all aboard, connected with Christ, grounded, firm, and deep. 
grounded, firm, and deep. Now, we are moving along, and as you know me, I, I love my old songs. Brother Craig just sang one of my favorite songs. And there's another song that says, a really old one that says, we are moving along. Jesus is leading the way to a place where we've never gone before. But you see, when we hear those words, it might appear that it's mystery. And because we don't know where we're going, it might cause anxiety. But we have no need to worry, saints, today because our DNA has victory in it. And because we have an anchor that keeps the soul, it means that we shall remain standing and on top of our defeat in the name of Jesus. So the symbol of the anchor is central. You'll see it on the screen. Now just a little background, I'm just going to be moving quite quickly, so you've got to stay with me. The symbol of the anchor is central. An anchor is an object that is used to attach a ship or boat to a specific point at the bottom of a body of water. The anchor prevents the ship from drifting away by the action of the winds and the waves. So the anchor is absolutely crucial to keeping the boat in place or else it will drift. But as I was doing my research, I understood that there were two types of anchor. There's temporary and there's permanent. A permanent is one that is rarely moved, but by contrast, a temporary anchor is put on board until it needs to be used. I want you to follow me. I'm going somewhere. Now, in these rapid and uncertain times, we need to understand that our unshakable anchor must be Jesus Christ. That must be permanent. Our faith and hope in him must be unshakable. But although we are anchored in Christ, we at Ente Tutin also need to be flexible and adaptable in our mission and ministry methods in a society that is postmodern, secularized, and individualistic. And we need to know how to lower down those anchors of ministry so that we don't drift away or become disconnected from the people that we serve. And so what we have to understand is that our mission will never change, but the methods have to change as we go forward. Now, we must not be out of touch and we must be constantly developing, moving, and growing. And I love our brother Joshua as he declared the vision for our young people in, in connection with our church vision. We want to see development. We want to see growth as a church. We need to pay particular attention to this. So this year is all about connecting and Christ being at the center of our connections with him, our church, our families, and our communities. Now, whether we like it or not, the digital world is here. For all of the technophobes in the house, ouch, we can't do anything about it. But what I want to encourage those of us who might not be technolog technologically savvy, it's nothing to be afraid of because all the digital platform has now done is given us greater reach in terms of our ministry. That I can be talking to you now in SW17, 7BU, but somebody in St. Thomas, Jamaica can be hearing me in real time. We give the Lord glory and praise. And I said St. Thomas because that's my family is from in Jamaica. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the digital platform is paramount. And if we want to go to measurable levels of the knowledge of the love and character of Christ, then we need to ensure that we remain anchored in him and invest in, in very important things. Prayer, worship. Now, these are what I call our vertical relationship. We have a horizontal relationship with one another. And even that has tried to be challenged by COVID, telling us that we have to socially distance ourselves from one another. But we need to understand this, if this relationship is not right, then this one cannot be right. Our relationship with God must be right first before we serve one another. And so how we care for one another, pastoral care is also paramount. And we at the church are restructuring the way in which, and galvanizing the way in which we care for one another. We give God thanks for all of the work of the care team and all those that offer care and support. It is so needed in this season. Now to be grounded, and I'm moving forward now, we're going to the text in a moment. To be grounded is to be stable, sincere, 
and firmly established. Now, an example of grounded is someone who can react calmly in crisis or under pressure. When you're grounded, you are not moved by what somebody else does. You respond in control. So sometimes it's not what they say, but it's how you respond. And being grounded means that you will not shift in your resolve. You will stay stable. To be firm is to have a solid, unyielding surface or structure. And to be deep is to be penetrating in awareness or understanding. To be intense, extreme, and extending far down. People have got to declare in the house today in NTA Tutin, our evangelism will be grounded in Christ. Our mission will be firm through Christ. Our discipleship will be deep in Christ. This year, there has to be a radical shift of our approach to ministry. Now, I'm going to give you two words here now. Generally, based on our normal circumstances, before COVID-19, our ministry was more geared towards attractional ministry. Let me explain what I mean. It is, when you attract something, you're trying to get people to come inside the building to engage with you. And equipping congregations to attract people from the outside to attend services, join ministries, and become members. Now, as we can see, based on where we are, there's more outside than we'll ever be able to come inside, based on the circumstances that we're in. So we need to understand, those of us who are in the house, first of all, give God glory that we can come in. Because I've got friends in ministry that their building cannot open yet. But we give God thanks that he's given us the opportunity to be in the house. But we understand that while we are here and we have a registration system, it means some others can't be here in their massive number. What am I saying? I'm saying that the digital church has just got to be as vibrant and dynamic as the physical church because people need to engage with the Lord without even coming into the sanctuary. So our mindset has got to shift. I've always said this, the building is wonderful, but it is the building. The church are the people, and we are lively stones building up a spiritual house. And we need to change our mindset and understand that although we come into worship, our worship cannot be subject to the building. We need to worship God 24-7 wherever we find ourselves because worship is all about God and our relationship with him. So we need to shift from attractional to what we call missional. Efforts that primarily service people who are not members or cannot attend church who may never cross the threshold of the church door. So guess what? The Lord showed me. That means the church building has become a temporary anchor. The building has become a temporary anchor. It is not the destination. Neither should it have ever been. It is like a filling or petrol station. Receive so you can release. Someone caught that. We come to church to receive so that we can release into the community. Hallelujah. So some of our priorities this year, and I'm going to the text. No time is far spent, but you know me. I am on a track, and you've got to stay with me because God wants to release something in this house. Some of our priorities this year are we are maintaining a whole system approach. And I've got this, this should also come up on the screen as well. I've got a slide. We are maintaining a whole system approach, which means we are doing everything together. No man or woman is an island. Hallelujah. Spiritual formation is, has got to be paramount. When we ask each other how we are, that we should not just be worried about people's physical needs, but we should be asking people, how are you spiritually? Because if anything the lockdown has taught us, my God, if physically we are locked inside of our home, the only thing that will allow us to keep on going is if our spirit man is renewed day by day. 
Our spirit man needs to be regenerated. And so how is your spiritual life? This must be a priority this year. We are a church of multi-generations. And so our ministry must be transgenerational. And it must be us all working together. No group being missed. We've seen in the last few months the cries of racial injustice and injustice all around the world. And so as a church, we must continue to have a voice that will stand up and be counted and will stand up for those that are oppressed. And so justice shall be something that will be on our agenda in a serious way. Enough is enough. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. We are about developing and nurturing and pushing people into their destiny. And so this year we are going to be strategically, as we've done before, but in more prominence, identifying, developing, and mentoring emerging leaders. Thank you. Emerging leaders. You see, you cannot do things on your own. We bless the Lord for a help meet. Someone say together. Amen. Bless the Lord. We will be identifying, developing, and mentoring emerging leaders. Hallelujah. Where there's an Elijah, there must be an Elisha. Because when Elijah is dead, then the ministries are dead. But in the name of Jesus, I declare in this house that as the Elijahs run their race, Elisha shall catch on just right behind you and the ministry shall go from strength to strength hallelujah from power to power and the gates of hell shall not prevail every negative word that's been spoken ever in this house I rebuke it in the name of Jesus the future is bright I said the future is bright I said the future is bright the future it's bright in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We can only go forward when we understand the word and go deep in the word. And so there shall be a, a real focus on our Christian education, understanding what God's word says and applying it in a new way in our lives. And we must share stories. This, this has been dropped heavily in my spirit. God is doing great things amongst us. We need to create a culture of sharing and testimonies. It's by the testimony of your spirit, hallelujah, that we overcome. When people understand where you've been, they understand that God can do it for them too. And because we're in a digital age, it may take a different form. But let God use and use your testimonies so that we as a body can be strengthened and inspired. And we develop relationships together. Greater fellowship, greater connection. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, as we think about the key scripture, I'm just going to move you for a few moments. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17 to 19, and I'm going to read, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend what all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now that's Paul's prayer for the Ephesian church. And it's our prayer for you this year.
that Christ will dwell and form in you by faith. Now to dwell is to live, to reside, to lay down roots. It's not temporary. This is a year of depth, not one of superficiality, not one of weakness. It's a year of depth. That we being rooted and grounded in love. Now Paul links two metaphors. He speaks about deep roots and firm foundations. Root is to be rendered firm and to be fixed. Grounded is to make stable. Hallelujah. So Paul talks about us being like a well-rooted tree and a well-built house. Hallelujah. Now in both cases, the unseen cause of their stability, the rooted tree and the well-built house is something. And it's a small letter, small word of four letters. The word is love. The scripture says it. That the thing that binds us as a rooted tree and as a well-built house is love. The virtue of love cannot be understated. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Love is, the scripture tells us, is the fullness of God. Those who are in God live in God and God lives in them. Hallelujah. Love is at the central or the centrality of our engagement, how we evangelize, our discipleship, how we develop each other, our investment, how we meet needs through mission. Love is at the center. And we need strength to love and the power to hom- comprehend Christ's love. Hallelujah. I am soon coming down. But I'm going to ask you if I can have two or three more minutes with your church as I finish to develop this word. Is that okay? Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, as the Holy Ghost began to speak to me about this idea of the anchor, to comprehend the love of God is to lay hold of it, to make it your own, to obtain and to attain it. And so when we are rooted and grounded in love, we can comprehend, understand what is the breadth, the height, and the depth of the love of God. It is a mystery, but God allows us to go deeper and higher and stronger in his love. This is the year where our love must become radical, where our knowledge of Christ must be radical, where our resolve must be radical. Hey, I feel like Jeremiah, fire shut up in my bones. I pray that the people of God will receive the word. Receive the word. Love is what shall bind us to. And so God began to show me. As we talk about being anchored in Christ, there is somewhere that we must stay. Now, when we put the anchor down, That absolute location is where it fixes us to. And to bring us to the 21st century, but mixing with the traditional sea instruments. The Lord showed me we need to stay in a particular place. This station is called King's Cross. Now, if you look at the image, You'll see the anchor is there. But in the anchor is the cross. (laughs) The word of God says that in the hope and in the love of God is the fullness of Christ. Which means in the anchor is the fullness of Christ. Christ is love. Christ sacrificed. Christ gave. Christ keeps on giving. Christ does not puff himself up. Christ loves freely. Christ does not keep a record Christ does not keep a record of wrongs Christ does not seek that which his own Christ seeks that which he does not have because he knows he has a gift to give to somebody else so even though we move on the journey in the ship we need to start from King's cross King Jesus start at the cross 
move forward and we engage in ministry and we help and we support, we come back to Terminus, back to King's Cross, back to, consec back to consecration, back, back to prayer, back to fasting. And we go again, grounded, firm and deep. We meet the needs, we meet the people, we send the ministry out and we come back to King's Cross. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come back to King's Cross. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but come back to King's Cross. Come back to the cross. Come back to the cross. At King's Cross, there's sacrifice. At King's Cross, there's blood for your sin. At King's Cross, there's healing for your sickness. At King's Cross, ha ya ya ya, ah ya 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 ya, woo woo woo, yeah, ah Jesus. At King's Cross, you can find life. You can find fuel for the journey ahead at King's Cross. For those of you who don't understand, I'm not talking about King's Cross, St. Pancras. I'm talking about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the cross that he allowed his son to die on for the remission of our sins. This is where you need to be anchored. Hey, hallelujah. And in my closing... Ancient commentators saw the breadth and the height and the depth of love illustrated in the dimension of the cross. If you see me stretched out like this, and you see my body like the pole of the cross, this body stands from heaven to earth. The hands of Jesus were stretched out, which meant that he was meeting the needs of everyone all over the universe, height, depth, width, breadth, the cross of Christ can reach the unreachable. So in our activity this year, wherever we go, wherever our ship takes us, our permanent anchor, our foundation, our terminus, and our starting point needs to be King's Cross. The temporary anchors are used at different points as we dock to meet different locations, different cultures, different viewpoints, different needs. But after we've fulfilled our mission there, we must always come back to base. It is the power of the gospel that changes lives and keeps them changed. And in that way, we are able to understand and comprehend the fullness of God we can attain the fullness of the Godhead in our lives. Now we're living, as I'm closing, in a time where loving your neighbor may look different to how it's been before. This love may need more patience, more tenacity, more resilience, more determination as they may be distant away from you. It may mean loving some people and walking with them for a long time through their struggles, their situations, and their difficulties. Because where we are, church, in this season of COVID-19, it is unpredictable. We don't know what can happen. But the only thing that is steadfast and sure is our faith and hope in Jesus Christ and the mission that he's called us to. Stick by people in the fullness of love. This year, we cannot be anchored to ink. It, we cannot be anchored to ignorance. This year, we cannot be anchored to pride. This year, we cannot be anchored to self-importance. This year, we cannot be anchored to selfishness. When we are anchored in Christ, hallelujah. When we are anchored in His love, glory to God. We are anchored to sharing the gospel. Anchored to a deep knowledge of the word. Anchored to make disciples. Anchored to serving the needs of others. Hallelujah. 
the Bible in one hand, a digital device in the other hand. You put the two together, we've got 21st century ministry. Run and go forward and allow God to use you like never before. And finally, Paul says, till we all come in the unity of the faith, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the fullness of Christ. Till we achieve the measure of the fullness of Christ, it is talking about maturity. And God is bringing us this year into a place of maturity. There's a verse that says, if you stay on the ship, no life will be lost. If you stay on the ship, you shall be safe. Stay on board. There's riches on the ship. There's power on the ship. There's strength on the ship. It may get tough, but you are rooted. The storm may rage, but you are grounded. The billows may roll, but you are secure. Now is not the time to come off the ship. I speak to anyone who's hearing my voice. If you're thinking of disembarking the ship, I tell you, turn yourself around. Remain on the ship so that your life can be saved. Stay firm. Stay true. Stay committed. Grounded. Firm. And deep. God bless you, people of God. I love you. In Jesus' name. just call you. Just for a moment. Just come on. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can, those who are not standing, if you can stand, please stand at this time. Hallelujah. We're going to pray a special prayer at this time. I'll just call Bishop to come to stand by me, to support me. As we pray a prayer. Now, as I spoke to you, we're going to have some wider prayer needs, but as I said, the place that we're in right now, we understand that the needs of the digital expectation on how we carry out ministry is at its most critical. This resource is mightily important. And those that are working in this team, those who lead these teams, and those that work alongside them are literally working night and day to ensure that we can continue to minister to all of those that God has given us access to. Hallelujah. And so we want to say how much we appreciate all of you. I end the sermon this way because, like I said, the Bible in one hand, but if we don't have the means to get it out there, then our ministry can be in vain. And so we give God thanks for all of the hard work of the teams that have been working so hard and are continuing to be at the cutting edge of the ministry. And so we want to pray a very special prayer right now for those teams. But in particular, we're going to just call the names of the leaders that represent those teams. And we are going to lift our prayer. And I want the congregation to also lift our prayer with me as we consecrate them, as we set them forth this new ministry year in a new level of anointing and grace for the work that is ahead. Amen. And I'm just going to call the names of leaders of those teams right now. We thank God for Reverend Kent Peters, who is the overseer of that ministry. We thank God for Sister Colleen Myers. We thank God for Brother Sergey. We thank God for our Brother Stefan and our Brother Sean Lewis, our creative arts ministry, and also our media and technical teams that they head up, and all of those that work with them. But we are going to pray a special prayer. We know that the anointing that flows at the head will continue to run down to the, to the garments of the rest of the team. And so I'm going to ask Bishop, can you just lift up this prayer at this time? And I just want you to lift up your hands in the air and just appreciate as God gives us grace and God gives us favor in Jesus, in Jesus' name. So Father God, we lift you 
right now those names that have been called we thank you father for you have furnished your church with these amazing talents these amazing gifts father you furnished us with uh, expertise with lord god a level of uh of ability lord jesus that we are so grateful for we thank you for the technical ability we thank you for father for the the skills and the competency that they bring to ministry and father we recognize that we are in a new day this is a new season and lord it, back in the day we didn't have all of this to contend with but we thank you lord god that you are leading your church and father you've not left your church oh god without the necessary uh, ministry uh, minist support ministries we thank Thank you father for our media team we thank you for our creative arts team we thank you for the leaders and all those who serve in these ministries father i pray for those who are leading may they see themselves not just as technicians as uh, lord as as pr and media and may they see themselves as ministers ministers in their respective uh, roles and Father, I pray for an anointing upon them. I pray for an anointing, a grace of creativity upon them. Give them insight. Give them creativity. Give them innovation, I pray. I also, God, I ask you for a spirit of discernment upon our media and our creative ministry and arts team. Father, give them discernment so that they, they can, oh God, know the difference between what is harmful and what is good because we know not all that is out there on social media not all that is out there in the digital sphere is good for us but father give them discernment so that they can know father what is good what is uh, lord would be a blessing to us what is harmful and they will lead father god in a way that will bless your church and will bless your kingdom father we commission them right now yes we commission them as they go forth into this new ministry year and into this new era of a virtual church and digital church. Anoint this area of ministry, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, church, shout aloud, amen. Can we get the praise on the screen? Go back to the first PowerPoint and we're going to pray together. How many were blessed by this word today? Come on. It's been said already several times throughout this service that the method, the, me the, the mission, the method might change. The strategies might have to change. But the mission remains the same. Amen. And today we heard very clear and compelling way the direction of travel that we're going to be going in in this year. How many are glad that you're not just you're not just coming to church, amen. We are on a journey. We are pursuing, amen, a vision. God has given us a vision because He knows without a vision, the people will perish. And we heard it in clear and compelling ways today. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. Thank you for making it plain. Thank you for writing it down. And we are getting ready to run with it. Anybody ready to run with a vision? Oh, yeah. We might have to run with our mask on, but we're going to run. We might have to run with some restrictions around us, but we are going to run on in Jesus' name. Come on, clap those hands. And while we're clapping our hands in church, those of you who are watching online, you shout for us with a voice of victory. Hallelujah. I hope we can get the praise on the screen. I just want us to say these prayers together. Amen. Everybody together as best as you can behind your mask. Come on, let's go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this New Testament assembly, Tooting. You have called us to be laborers together in Tooting, in London and to the ends of the earth. As we lift our voices in one accord, recognizing that you are God, we call into being those things that are not as though they were we thank you that we all speak the same there is no division among us and we are of the same mind grant us a boldness to proclaim your word which you will confirm with signs following we thank you that we have workers in abundance 
and all manner of creative people for every kind of work. Each department operates in excellence of ministry. Come on, those of you online, read, pray with us. We have in our church the ministry gifts for the edifying of this body till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature person. None of our people will be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every kind of doctrine. We speak the truth in love. We are a worshiping church, becoming stronger in faith and witness, growing in love and increasing in numbers. We have every need met. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Therefore, we meet the needs of people who come, spirit, soul, and body. Our church is thriving financially. We have more than enough to meet every situation. We have everything that we need to carry out your great commission and to reach the ends of the earth for Jesus. We are a people of love, as love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that the Word of God is dwelling richly in all of us and Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, declare it. Jesus is Lord. Declare it again. Jesus is Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have a short clip, um, um, the alpha clip. Imagine if during a time of uncertainty, the church shared the gospel in a new way. Imagine if this meant we were able to reach people who wouldn't have explored faith before. Imagine if those people having encountered Jesus in their own homes, plucked up the courage to invite others to explore faith. Imagine the ripple effect one friend telling another. What if imagination became reality? What if there was a unique evangelistic opportunity available? Alpha Online was innovated during a time when churches were pressed to exist in a digital space. Alpha Online, simply put, is a series of interactive sessions exploring some of the big questions of the Christian faith. Each session is centered around watching a short film and time of discussion where people can share and ask questions with an online group. I have been proved wrong so many times in my life and Alpha Online is one of those occasions. I've always said Alpha Online won't work and I could not have been more wrong. Alpha Online works wonderfully and I've been trying to work out why that is. I think there are a number of reasons. For a start, a lot of the people in this small group say have been able to do it online in a way that I couldn't do it before because I've got young children, I couldn't get childcare, I have more time to think, it's made me think about the big questions, and then they're all relaxed because they're in their own homes. This is a universal experience that somehow being online makes people feel more able to be vulnerable. And that means there's a closer connection right from the start. More people come, it's more relaxed, and then people are far more open. So far, thousands of churches have used Alpha Online to invite their communities to explore life, faith, and meaning. Our prayer is that Alpha Online becomes a tool that helps you and your church reach more people than ever before with the good news of Jesus. If you've never done Alpha Online, I cannot recommend it more highly. Give it a go. You will love it. Run Alpha Online. There should be another clip coming up now. Um, so if you want to know more information about Alpha, just again, look on the website and you'll get more information on that. And then, oh, now, offering time. Now, I know we don't jump up like we usually do and come out, but... Thank you for your donations that you make online. And thank you for those who have been so faithful in, 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 in paying their tithes and offerings. And if you are paying by cash, um, cash is king, um, you can place it in the receptacle at the back on your way out. But more details about um, offering will be coming up now.
giving to the New Testament Assembly Tootin couldn't be easier with Tithely. To get started, you can visit our website at www.ntatootin.org.uk forward slash give and follow the on-screen instructions or text give to plus four four one one seven three two five four four two zero. You will receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information and you're all set up. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you make a mistake, no problem. Just text refund in the reply. Giving with Tybly is the simplest way to give to NTA Tutin. Thank you for your contribution. coming to the end of our service now um, so it's just a couple of announcements um, those of you who were here in the 80s um, you may remember uh, Reverend Daniel Blackman who was a former member and minister of NTA Tutin who migrated to Arizona in the USA in the 80s and he sadly passed away on the 18th of September so please pray uh, for his wife, Cynthia, and children. And also, um, our mother Black has lost her elder sister, Miss Boyne, in Jamaica. So we're going to pray for her. So let's stand. And also, I'll be praying for those who are going into hospital um, for surgery or for tests, or there may be some that are already staying in hospital, and for those that are traveling. So please pray with me. Dear Father, we remember those who at this time that are grieving the loss of a loved one, whether it be a family member, a friend. Lord, hear our prayers and grant them peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Comfort them, Lord, with your abiding love. You said in your word that you would never leave them nor forsake them. Stretch forth your loving arms at this time and wrap them around them. Wrap your loving arms around them at this time. Comfort them at this time, at this time of need. Father, I ask this, Lord, in your precious name. Father, we remember those who are in hospital, those who are going for tests or awaiting the results of tests. Father God, I pray that you will be with them, Lord. Be with them in the hospital room. Be in the waiting room. Wherever they are, Lord, be with them, Father. I pray, Father God, that you will give them the nurses and the doctors, oh God, that will be able to help them, oh God, that the results will be favorable, oh God. I pray that you will be with them, Lord. Take away any fear or anxieties that they may have, oh God. Father, I pray also, Father, that you will remember those who are traveling, Father, we used to take it so lightly when we traveled abroad. But of these days, oh God, traveling, oh God, can be so difficult. Because, Father, you never know if you're going to be stuck out wherever you are for quarantine or you have to quarantine when you get back. Father, you just don't know. But, Father, I pray that those who are traveling, Father, that you will, oh God, give them traveling mercies. I pray, Father God, that you will be with the drivers, whether it be the pilot, the drivers, whoever it is that's taken them or where, how their mode of transport. And I pray, Father, that the country that they land in, Father God, would be safe, Father. That wherever they go in that country, that they would be safe. Father God, protect them at this time. Father God, we decree and declare, Father God, that no virus 
no coronavirus will come near them. Father God, I pray, oh God, that you will stretch forth your hand and keep that sickness, Father God, at bay. And I pray, Father God, that they will return, Father God, safe and well in your precious name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat for one last time. Hallelujah. I would like to take the opportunity to welcome a lovely couple, a newly wedded couple. Please stand, Brother Jackie and Sister Nadine. Please stand. Congratulations. Welcome back. So nice to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, that's the end of our service. So, nothing else for me to do but to pronounce a benediction. Now, before we go, can I please ask that you stay in your seats and allow the ushers to guide you out. And when you do go out, can I ask that we do not congregate in the streets? We have to remember the neighborhood. We have to remember that there are people outside watching. So please, I know you want to meet people. I know you want to talk. But can I ask you that you just go straight home, okay? So please stand. Amen. God bless you, church. Just one final announcement as we're about to go out. As you know, many of our young people are going off to university in the next days and next weeks. And we want to give God thanks, Sister Danilia. This Wednesday, she'll be going to study at DeMont University in Leicester. So please, let's just stretch her hand and say, bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. We wish you all the very best and success as you embark on this new journey. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Amen. All right. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. We love you. Follow the direction of the ushers as you are dismissed. God bless you. like you. Once you've signed up, we will allocate you to the next available course and we will give you the start date and time. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at admin at ntatutin.org.uk. We look forward to welcoming you onto our online alpha very soon.
So we stand this morning, church, at the crossroads of history. Bishop Kao here, just uh, want to uh, share this short video message with you and I want to say to you that as a church that we are concerned about the spread of the coronavirus and that we are doing everything that we can to ensure that our building is safe. It is indeed a privilege um, to be worshipping with you today. We are living in unprecedented times. But we thank God that we still have the opportunity to worship God, to give him the glory and to give him the praise. The Lord should be your shepherd. The Bible says that he is sufficient. He's enough. Come on, say the, Jesus is enough for me. He's all that I need. Encourage fluids such as water, soup, and nutritious drink. Come on, let's join with the angels and cry. We cry holy, Lord God Almighty. Say I wanna. Yeah. Get your emblems ready. That's your juice and your bread as we get ready to break bread. The first prayer point is about salvation. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you for this day. We pray for those who are seeking the Lord at this time.